Hello guys and welcome to my welcome to my course, Rx Java Hands-On course. My name is Leonardo Silva and I will be talking about Rx Java 2 and practical examples. So uh, before we start, uh, the idea of this this class this classes is to to keep them as short as possible. So I hope this I can do them in around 10 minutes or in worst case 15 minutes. So it's easier for you to follow as well and then easier for me to cut the, the, the content of everything. So let's start today. Uh, I will, instead of start with the introduction, like explaining what exactly is, is Rx Java or what exactly is Reactive X, I will like basically show why, why, why this is, why, why Rx Java or Reactive X exist. So uh, Reactive X, why should, we, why should I care? Why should, should you care? So uh, there are some things that we have, some problems that we you may face or already faced in your in your career. I will I will name a few. So for example, infinite streams is something that sometimes we need to deal with. Uh, asynchronous executions in the same in the same way. So sometimes we have to do asynchronous uh, calls, and sometimes uh, need to be serialized or not. Sometimes need to be in parallel, but depends. So. But this is something that when it needs to be serialized, usually it's it's hard to do in Java, especially because it usually works with a future or callbacks, and then callbacks is always a problem when you have to chain calls and all the stuff. I will show some example here for you to understand better. Uh, function composition. So in Java, uh, when you have different functions and you want to uh, chain the, the call of these functions is also something not, not so easy to do. And even harder when some of these functions are synchronous and some of them are not are not synchronous are asynchronous. And sync and async function should be friends. So like that that's really important because when you have like not thinking about function programming, but if you, if you have a system where you have methods or functions, some of them are uh, maybe are asynchronous, some maybe are not. So what do you do then? Like you need to kind of uh, make some bad or like work around to make this work like in an easy way, but it's it's always like a pain. It's, it's nothing really natural. And that's something that uh, ReactiveX, in, in our case, RxJava, that's implementation of our ReactiveX, that ReactiveX is like a concept. Um, and we have like a lot of implementations of ReactiveX. So we have RxJava, we have RxJS, we have a lot of them. And let's see then, uh, some code to explain why these four points then. So I have created one project that I will, uh, I will be posting the, the link in the, in the video. So you can follow this. My idea is that I will create one new branch for each class. So for first class, you have a specific branch where you can always see the current code, the, the code for like the code that was done after the class finished. Uh, okay, so let's go then. Uh, so I have this class, I created this class called infinite stream. So this class is a fancy class that is basically simulating like a Game of Thrones uh, scene. So how exactly does it does it does it work? So we have a function called called stream. This stream will basically uh, receive a consumer. That's a function, and then I will use like a global timer and I will schedule at a fixed rate a task that will execute every five seconds. And this uh, function every five seconds will uh, Call the callback, passing a, a character that will be a Game of Thrones character. So what it does, okay, for this stream, I will receive one character after five seconds. So like in theory, this is an infinite stream until someone come and kill the process. This will be running, and then we get a new CD for each every time I get a new character. I get a new CD. I get a new dragon. That's some function that we have here. And then I basically print, okay, uh, this character is going to this city. Then what I do is I have another method called try to kill. Try to kill receive the character, the dragon, the city, and then we have a not yet another callback. So what is try to kill does, in fact? So it receives the character, uh, the enemy, the city, and the callback. So what it does is that after two seconds, so this we are kind of trying to simulate uh, asynchronous call that will delay in two seconds. And then what it, what it will do, it will like use a fake response that will be true or false to see if the, the, the character won or not the battle. And then we are going to, to, uh, to print, 
like arriving at this place, uh, this character tried to kill this this dragon and succeeded or not, won or lost. And then we call the callback saying if the guy was succeeded or not. So what we do here, we receive this callback that will be the boolean one. And then we check, we get an yet another, we can even do that here. Let me change to move to clear. So we check if the a character won the battle. What we do, we get a new last city, a new dragon, and then we try to kill again. So let's imagine uh, one character won the first dragon, or lost the first dragon, it will go to else and say, uh, get out of here. And then, uh, but in case that character wins the, the battle, it will try to kill the other dragon. So it, try to kill, it goes to another city and try to kill another dragon. Now let me just print this here again, because this guy is going to another city. So the character tries to kill another dragon in an another city. And then if, in case the character wins again, the character will see, okay, this character is the best one, and that's it. Or not, okay, not so lucky that time, sorry. So let's try to run this guy now. So let me, yeah. Okay, so we can see that this is working. So win and go to the other. Oh, unfortunately, went to the same city. Oh yeah, it's my fault, right? Anyway, so you see that's working. My points that I just didn't use the right, the right city here, but that's just doesn't matter much. So you can see that this is working, right? And then we have like an infinite stream. This is not really relevant, but then you can at least see how how this works. So the thing is now, uh, I already have another version of this, uh, Arik Shava. And I will show you how exactly this will work in a different way. So let's just focus again on this class to see how how like complex this is. So we have one call. So we have the first callback. Then we have here the second callback, and then we have another callback. So as as many calls we have, as many times we are going to have callbacks. So we go to our RX Infinite Stream version. So whoa, it's too small. Okay. So let's start now. So first, the first change that we did is the stream. The stream now, it does not receive any callback anymore. What it does uh, is that it returns a flowable of string. What a flowable, flowable means? In Arc Java 1, we didn't have flowable. We, have, we had uh, observable. Observable and flowable are kind of similar. I won't explain the difference in, like now because it's a bit more complex, but just imagine there's a, a flowable as a emitter or like an object that emit events that, that can be infinite. So this is a flowable. So it says like, okay, I want to create a flow, flowable and uh, I want to by, by interval, like initial, it just, it just doesn't work in the same way it's working on the first version. So initial delay of one second and then per, period of five seconds, I want to create a new event. And then this event will do, we will return, uh, we produce in fact, a long value, but that's not that's not something that I want. So if I do here, so if I return here, my code will complain saying, "Okay, you were saying that you are trying to ret you're trying to return a flow of string, but interval returns a flow of long, but that's not what I want." So that's why I basically say, "Okay, I don't care what what's the long value that you're you're mapping here. I just want to map this long and ignore this long, and return my character, my new character." And that's it. So I receive a new character here. And what I do, I say, okay, now this stream will return a lot, will emit a lot of events. So what I do is for every event, I want to return, I want to return another em emitter of event. So we have the tr try to kill. So this is something that you don't need to, to like uh, spend time thinking about this now. I will just explain in the, in the next few classes. So let's see the try to kill method now. Okay, so try to kill then returns a single of boolean. So what does that mean, right? We saw like first flowable and now we see a single. What's the difference then? So a flowable, as I said, is a, like an object that will uh, emit one or infinite events. In that case, from uh, an event that will be in string. If single is the opposite, it will basically emit one event and that's it. So what, what I'm saying here is that, okay, I want to emit one event after two seconds, and this event will, will do what? What is this event? It's a boolean, and the boolean will be the result of a random 
boolean result then in this um, after this timer two seconds i will basically return a boolean value here and we will print out the result of this uh, battle here and also return like pass the event of boolean like the one like one or not to to the next um, next next function and then so i pass here and then here uh, let's remove it for you to understand what, what's happening. So if I say here, uh, okay, here I'm returning a, a single of boolean. So this means that the next function that will be that guy, you receive a one here. But that's not what we want, right? Because like now we have the one, okay, but we know that someone won something. But who won what against who? You know, we don't know. So that's why we need to keep context of what we are doing. So that's why we are mapping here. So because here we have the context, we have the who is fighting against who, we, we know the city, we know everything. So what we need to know the context that we need for the next execution is about the character that is fighting because he will need to fight again. And we need to know if the guy won or not. So we need to know the number of battles that this guy already won. So we say, okay, try to kill, then based it on the answer, I will map this result to another result. So you can see that we have here flat map and then we have here map. It's uh, what's the difference? I'm going to explain next classes. So here what I'm doing, okay, I get the, the one result that's a boolean and I create a pair. I could have created a class, but only for the sake of like being fast, I just created a pair. But anyway, and so I create a pair that will basically wrap the character and uh, the number of victories that this character already have. Then I basically do another flat map then I here we receive the pair and I see, okay, if this guy uh, lost last battle, so this means that the guy has zero victory, I will just pass this guy, this guy further and I don't care if this guy won't fight again. So this means that this guy will come here, will emit a single, um, a single uh, event of pair, so single dot just emits an event with this value pair, then it will just go further to the next, question, next uh, function that will be subscribed. And then subscribe, you basically receive the pair, get the character that that fight it, and then see, okay, now the guy, uh, the right is not two, is zero, is not one, is zero, then come here and say, okay, the guy lost everything, so get out of here. So uh, let's imagine the case that the guy won here, and then what we're going to have, we're going to have number one, so the guy has won a victory. So we come here, this is not zero, it come here, and then get the, a new, get the, the character from the previous context, get a new city, a new dragon, then print, this guy is going to this city, and then try to kill the new dragon in the new city. And then uh, again, we map the result, okay, this guy won or not, we create a new pair, like keeping this context again, uh, and then we update the number of victors that this guy has. And then here, we do the same logic here. Right, so that's still keep this keep this keep the same. So you, you see the difference between the two approach, approaches. Uh, first one is that this is like this will easily become a callback hell. So we have one callback and then we have the second callback and then we have the third callback, and that's it. Like as many times if you wanted to to fight three times or four times, this will be callback hell already. And here we can easily. Uh, work with this. We can easily say, okay, now I want to skip. I want to pass. We can also filter. Uh, an event and all the stuff we we could use like a uh, an error for example here I could say okay if the guy lost I don't want to pass around I just want to throw an error like an error when I mean error is not like a throwing an exception but means throwing an, an event of an error and then we are going to to bypass every all the new function all the next functions and just go to like a own error kind of uh, callback in the end so we could do this as well. But here is just one simple example of of, of changing this, uh, refactoring this. So only for you to have an idea about some things that we can do with Rx Java, but we can do a lot, a lot more. And then that's what uh, we are going to see in next classes. So let's go back for my slides. So what what we have next then? Um, so next classes, next videos, uh, I'm going to explain a bit like the different of type, the different types of event emitters that we have in Rx Java two and also some basic operations, so operators. So now we saw a map, we saw just, we saw flat map, flat map single, and we are I'm going to explain the basic 
of some of them next class. I hope you like it, this class. If you like it, please uh, like in, in YouTube and share with your friends. And see you in next class. Bye-bye.